pray five times a day at exact calculated timings. That's obedience to Allah. That's how we approach the success for life. When we accept Islam, we're obligated to give a portion, a small portion of our material wealth to those in need. That's obedience to Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran to be kind to the wayfarers, be nice to people who have less, because that could be us and we could be them. That is obedience to Allah. Allah says in the Quran to obey Allah and follow his messenger. Obedience to Allah is to try to imitate the character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's not just a good idea. That's not just a suggestion. That's a commandment and also a recipe for success. Because imitating Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every way we can is obedience to Allah. So my dear brothers and sisters, let's focus on doing everything we can to increase our obedience to Allah. Follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and help each other. Let's remind each other so that we can hope to achieve true success as it is perceived by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulika lihada astaghfirullah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh child of a very helpful nature. He is 12 years and 3 months old. Presently, he is a class 1 student. His noteworthy achievements include Certificate of Excellence in Islamic Studies and English Language. His hobbies are playing Islamic games, acquiring knowledge of science and reading. What is striking about this little Dai of Islam is that he strives to emulate the companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. His ambitions are to be a cardiologist and a die of Islam. Now the Fez today will speak on a very interesting topic and shortly said, happiness comes not from the absence of conflict in life, but by the ability to cope up with it. A talk entitled, 17 Causes That Bring Happiness. Brothers and sisters, please welcome Brother Fez. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Fa'uz billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyatu an-nafsu mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki raziyatan marziyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wa dkhuli jannati. Rabbi shali sadri wa yassirli amri wa al-'uqdatam min lisani my respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. 
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ میں پیس مرسی اینڈ دا بلیسنگس آف اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی بی آن آل اف یو دا ٹاپک آف مائی ٹاک از 17 کوزز دیٹ برنگ ہیپینس دیٹ وچ برنگز ہیپینس ان دس ورلڈ ان دس ٹرانزینٹ لائف دو دا ریل ہیپینس دا ایور لاسٹنگ ون دا ہیپینس وچ از فری فرام آل وریز and ZT's troubles is only in Jannah. But in this world also, we can live happily if we follow the commandments and the instructions of our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the nature of man to look for happiness. Everyone is looking for happiness. Some people tread on the right path and they've found this happiness. While others, they've gone the wrong way, the evil path, and they're still looking for it. but they haven't found it yet. Some people look for happiness in drugs, money, prestige, and other types of sinfulness, but yet they do not attain happiness. As you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that a human being consists of two parts, the body and the soul. And unless and until you strike a balance between the body and the soul, you will not find happiness. Yes, you are trying to satisfy the needs of the flesh, but by only focusing on the flesh, you will not find happiness. Don't you see people killing themselves to have all kinds of freedom? They're free to do anything. Drugs, women, alcohol, anything. No limitations at all. But yet, they're worried. Yet, they're in misery. Why? If happiness is money, why are rich people killing themselves and committing suicides? Now, having mentioned these, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to start mentioning the 17 causes that will, inshallah, by the grace of Allah, Zafjal, bring happiness into our lives. The first cause is the shukr and fikr. Think and thank. Think who brought you into life. Why am I here? What does Allah want from me? What am I doing? Where am I going? And when am I going? Because every human being knows he's leaving this world sooner or later. Do you know the answer of all these questions? Puzzling questions. So the first cause is the fikr, to think and to obey, to worship the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Bakra, chapter number 2, verse number 152, First Quran is Kurkum, first Quran is Walatak Furun. And remember me, and I will remember you. And be grateful to me for the favors I bestow upon you, and do not be ungrateful to me. I would like to narrate to you an incident of a student of Hadith, Imam Ibrahim, Rehmatullah Alayhi, and his brother. They were traveling for the cause of Hadith when they reached the river bank. They decided to rest and open the bags for food. What was the food? Dry breads. They started dipping the bread into the water and ate it. Imam Ibrahim said, By Allah, had the sons of the kings felt how we feel, they would have surely fought us with their swords. Allahu Akbar. What they have to eat with themselves is dry breads and water. But he was talking about the real happiness, which is inside ourselves. Happiness, according to Shaykh al-Islam, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, what he said about was, What can my enemies do to me? My Jannah is in my chest. My imprisonment is privacy with Allah. My deportation is trifling in the land of Allah. A person has reached this level. What can you do for him? What can you do? This is the real happiness. So that is the first cause, my dear brothers and sisters. The fikr, to think and to obey, to thank the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cause number two is, what has happened in the past has happened. No need to regret. If any calamity strikes, we say, Qaddar Allah wa ma sha'afala. Allah so decreed and He does what He wills. Imam Ibn Qayyam rahmatullah alayhi asks, Which is faster, the rabbit or the dog? The people replied, the rabbit. Imam Ibn Qayyam Rahmatullah Alayhi said, But yet the dog catches up with the rabbit. The dog is slower, the rabbit is faster. But yet the dog catches up with the rabbit. The people had no answer. Then the shaykh continued, Because the stupid rabbit runs, stops and looks back. We should not be like the rabbit. What has happened in the past has happened and should not affect our presence of happiness. Cause number three is, Live your day to the fullest. Today, I will not think about tomorrow. Enjoy your day. For instance, you're sitting with your family, your kids are around you, your wife is sitting next to you. It's a beautiful atmosphere. 
a cozy atmosphere. But you can easily spoil this beautiful feeling by remembering the bad memories, the bad days. Is this sanity? You are having a good time and you're spoiling it by remembering the bad memories? No, my dear brothers and sisters, we should always enjoy our friends of happiness. That is cause number three, to live your day to the fullest. Cause number four is, leave tomorrow till tomorrow. Our sloth, the pious predecessors, understood this very well. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an used to work for a Jew and used to draw water for him from work. For one day's work, he used to attain a handful of dates. He would say, this is a risk for today. This is a sustenance for today. Tomorrow, Allah will provide. Allahu Akbar. Many of us, my dear brothers and sisters, have real estate, have money in the banks, and have many other things. But yet, we are worried. The mother, the wife is carrying a whip in the husband, saying, do something for your kid's future. She's after you till you collapse and I see you. When Umar bin Abdulaziz was dying, he said to his sons, My sons, I not leave a single penny for you. I not leave anything for you to commit sin on. If you're righteous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you. He did not leave anything for his children. And also, the righteousness of the father means Allah's protection of the children. But the main thing is, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you read, so you have chapter number 18, what's the way to do? وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the town. وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا And there lay underneath it treasure which belonged to them. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحَا And their father was a righteous man. فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَا شُدَّهُمَا And your Lord intended that they attain their age of full strength. وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا كَنَتْ زَوْمَا And take out the treasure. رَحْمَتَمْ so that is cause number four, to leave tomorrow till tomorrow. Cause number five is to meet and to face the unfair criticism bravely. Meet the unfair criticism bravely, my dear brothers and sisters. Because people will criticize us. People will insult us. People will say bad things about us. By Allah, they were fools that they criticized the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not better than the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if the fools say something... Just ignore it. I would like to know to a story of a legendary character in the Arabic literature named as Yuha. Some people say it was actually not legendary. Once Yuha said to his son, My son, do not concentrate and focus on what the people say about you because they will always say bad things about you even if you have done them no harm. And today, I will prove it to you. The son agreed. The son, Yuha and his donkey set out together. They passed a first group of people. The people said, Look at these people. They're fools. They're having a donkey, but no one's riding it. You are said to his son, Count this as number one. And then, Jua instructed his son to ride the donkey. And they passed a second group of people. The people said, Look at this son. He has no adab. He has no manners. His father, the poor old man, is walking while he's riding the donkey. You are told to his son, Count this as number two. And then, you are asked his son to get down and he rode the donkey. What did the people say? The people said, Look at this father. He has no rahma. He has no mercy for his child. He is riding the donkey while his child is walking. You are told to his son, Count this as number three. And then, You and his son both ride the donkey. The people said, Look at these people. They have no rahma. They have no mercy. They are riding the donkey and he's carrying a burden of two. You are told to his son, Count this as number four. And then, you and his son both decide to carry the donkey. But did the people leave them? No. The people said, look at these crazy people. They're fools. Instead of the donkey carrying them, they are carrying the donkey. So, we should not focus and concentrate on what the people will say. Because people will eat away at times. Verily, you will not be able to silence them. But you will be able to bury their criticism by dismissing what they have to say. Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, Shaman 3, verse 119, Say, perish in rage. So, that is cause number five, to meet and face the unfair criticism bravely. Fresh to holy peace. Hong
quests. Quest. And rebellions. Victories. And defeats. Honor and betrayal. The noble. And the wicked. Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, on a journey of discovery through our Islamic path to find lessons for our Islamic future. Perceive the unusual and consistent progress of Islam due to its unique attitude with the passage of time in Lessons from Islamic History, next on Peace TV. Fresh to holy peace. Cosmos 6 is expect not appreciation from people. Expect not appreciation from people, my dear brothers and sisters. Shaykh al-Islam, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullah Alayhi said, you will not reach the true station, the true ikhlas, until the ones who despise you and praise you be the same for you. What does this mean? It means that if someone praises me, I feel good. MashaAllah, superb, Jazakallah. But at this moment, there's no room for improvement. And on the other hand, if someone displaces me, I try to defend myself and I get hurt inside. But the true mukhlis is the person whom you displace or praise. It's the same for him and that's it. Do not expect appreciation from people. If you do any khayr, do it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Islam teaches us that if someone does us any good, we should tell to him, Jazakallah khayr, may Allah bless you with good. Aisha radiallahu anha, whenever she would send food or anything for the needy, she would always send a slave girl to listen what the people say about her. Barakallahu feekum, may Allah bless you all. And then Aisha radiallahu anha would say, wa feeem barakallah, and may Allah bless them. She said, we return the greetings in a similar way and our reward remains with us. We do everything we can to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is cause number six, to not expect appreciation from people. Cause number seven is, we have to be kind to all. Be kind to everyone. Be kind to every human being, Muslim or non-Muslim. Be kind to every animal or any other animate thing. Don't you feel good when you save the life of a human being or an animal? That is a true happiness. And we know that a man was forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just because he quenched the thirst of a thirsty dog. So we should always be kind to everyone. We should be kind to all. Cause number eight is, repel boredom with work. A Muslim should not feel, I feel bored. I don't know what to do. I just want to kill my time. Have you heard these terms? We say, let us kill time. But by killing time, we are killing our own selves as we consist of nothing but minutes and seconds. And a true Muslim will never be free. As it is mentioned in Surah Inshira, chapter 94, verse 78. Faiza farakh tafansab, wa'ila rabbika farakhab. Therefore, when you're free, still labor hard. Shaykh al-Islam, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, his grandfather told to his son, Oh my son, I cannot take my book with me to the toilet. So whenever I enter the toilet, read in a louder voice so I can hear what you say. Those were our pious predecessors who knew the value of time. The Prophet poem says, In Sayyid al-Bukhari, volume 8, Hadith number 6412, There are two blessings that people lose, that are health, and free time. So we should always utilize the free time in doing good deeds. As we know, we'll be questioned on the Day of Judgment about a free time. What are we going to say? I was watching a telly serial. I was watching a football match. No, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not the answer you're going to give. So you always utilize the free time in doing good deeds. Cause number nine is to be content with Allah's Qadr. Be content with Allah's Qadr. Allah is not wronging us. Whatever happens, happens for our own good and because Allah loves us. He did not want you to leave your house and then suddenly the roof falls upon you and you become a shaheed. Don't you want shahada? Don't you want jannah? They say they were innocent children. Children, Ibrahim Islam will take care of them in jannah. So that is a contentment with Allah's qadr. And if any calamity strikes, we say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. All praise be to Allah in every circumstance. Cause number 10 is, always know, إِنَّمَا الْأُسْيُسْرَ فَإِنَّمَا الْأُسْيُسْرَ إِنَّمَا الْأُسْيُسْرَ 
With every distress, there is life. There is light. There will be a light, and there will be a relief coming from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Cause my eleven is make lemon a sweet drink. When Abu Bakr was there, and and the Prophet is upon him, were leaving from Medina, Suraka bin Malik followed them, as he wanted the reward of hundred she camels, which was put on capturing Abu Bakr was there, and and the Prophet was there upon him. Abu Bakr was there, and noticed him following them. So he informed the Prophet of Allah. The Prophet is upon him said, "No need to worry. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will take care of us." And then, all of a sudden, Suraka's horse slipped and fell on the rocky land. This happened thrice. Then the Prophet is upon him said, "O Suraka, go back, as you will not be able to capture us. And I see the bracelet of the King of Persia in your possession. Just imagine, someone is wanted, and he's promising the bracelet of the King of Persia." Ultimately, Muslims took over Persia, and in the Caliphate of Marwan bin Khattab, رضي الله عنه, the bracelets were brought forth to Suraka bin Malik. Imam Hamal became the Imam of Al Sunnah out of jail. Imam Salaf said, "Mutallah alay reduced twenty volumes of the Hanfi Mazhab when he was in prison in a well." So you make lemon a sweet drink. Cause number twelve is whenever you are in distress, call upon Allah Azza wa Jal by saying Ya Allah. And this will bring you a relief immediately. Cause number thirteen is concentrate on your own sins and not the sins of others. We should always concentrate and focus on our own sins, as we have enough sins. So that is cause number thirteen to concentrate on your own sins and not the sins of others. Cause number fourteen is hoping for Allah's reward. Allah rewards immensely, and you know. That if you offer two rakats for Jum and then wait in a mosque and then you offer two rakats after sunrise, you get the sawab of one Hajj and one Umrah. So you see, you can do one Hajj and Umrah every day. So keeping this in mind, it brings you happiness. Cause number fifteen is make the fruit and always leave the seed. For instance, there's an alim and he's very good. He's very learned. You take all the good qualities from him and leave. All his shortcomings unto him, and do not apply it. And if you want to search for someone who is perfect, I am challenging you. There is not a single soul on this earth who is perfect. So that is cause number fifteen to always make the fruit and leave the seed. Cause number sixteen is iman is the most important thing of your life. If you have the iman, my dear brothers and sisters, you have everything. But if you lose it, you have lost everything. So always maintain your iman. This will bring you happiness. Cause number seventeen is always keep your tongue busy with the zikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Always keep your tongue busy with the zikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by saying Allah ma ini zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Cause that the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the food for the hearts. I would like to end my talk by quoting the verse that I mentioned in the beginning of my talk from Surah Fajr, chapter number eighty-nine, verse number twenty-seven to thirty. Ya ayatuha nafsul mutmainna, O righteous soul, in complete rest and satisfaction. Irji'i ila Rabbi ki raziyatam marziya. Come back to thy Lord willingly and willingly unto Him. Fadhuli fi badi and enter thou among my devotees. Madhuli jannati and enter thou my heaven. Wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi. Jazakallah for the faith, for that wonderful advice. May Allah help us and strive to be happy. Salman Sheikh is a class seven student born on 31st October 1997. Salman is 12 years and seven months old. Salman has a very good grasping power and a very helpful nature. He has received certificate of excellence for good conduct and good behavior. Salman is an able reader and loves to play football. He wants to be a writer so that he can defend Islam by the pen. Brothers and sisters, we all know sound travels 343 meters per second. Light travels 300,000 meters per second. Do you know something that travels faster than light? Yes, it is our communication with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is the dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Dua is a hotline to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Let's learn more about this powerful weapon in the talk entitled 
Dua, the weapon of a believer. Brothers and sisters, please welcome Brother Salman. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb. Ujibu da'wata al-da'i idha da'ani. Fal yastajibu li. Wal yu'minu bi. La'allahum yarshudun. Rabbi shahli sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Topic of my talk is dua, the weapon of a believer. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us dua is the noblest act of worship. It is the most blessed act of worship. He said, Ad-du'ahu mukhul ibadah. Mukh means backbone. Dua is the essence of worship. It is the backbone of worship. You cannot have worship without dua. Why do we make dua? How do we make dua? And how can we improve our dua that we make for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I would like to talk to you about this subject through a very important story mentioned in the glorious Quran. And that is the story of Adam, peace be upon him, and his encounter with Iblis in Jannah. This story is of crucial importance.